Hi everyone, how's it going? It's Dr. Spear here. Um, the other day in class, someone asked me about the pharyngeal teeth and how do we remove them so that we can observe them because it is an important character that we use when trying to identify fish, especially cyprinid fish. And um, so I thought it would be good for me to create a little video that shows the pharyngeal teeth and how we use them for identification and then um, how do we remove them? So let's go ahead and do that. So the pharyngeal teeth, of course, are the throat teeth. And I'm going to talk about what are they very briefly and then very quickly show you how I remove them for observation. So bony fish have five gill arches and most of those gill arches support the gill rakers in the anterior part and the filaments on the posterior part. But sometimes that fifth arch is modified. And it does not have gill filaments, but it does have teeth. And it's probably the rakers get modified into those teeth. And those are the pharyngeal teeth. So if we look at this image from Fishes of Tennessee, it shows the uh, four pharyngeal arches or gill arches and the rakers on the anterior part. And then we have that fifth arch that gets modified. And there's lots of ways that you can get the pharyngeal teeth, or there's lots of types of pharyngeal teeth. This is the classic example of molar-like teeth in the freshwater drum. Of course, these are used for crushing mollusks. And you can look in a lot of the suckers will also use the pharyngeal teeth to identify them. And here is um, in the right picture is an example of, again, molar-like teeth. Um, um, sometimes uh, you have comb-like teeth in the left picture. Um, but as I said, in the cyprinids is where we use these a lot to identify what species we have. And these are some images from Fishes of Tennessee again. And this is the anterior kind of dorsal view. We're looking down the fish's throat, just so you can kind of orient yourself and, and where these are within the fish. And so like I said, these things can be used to identify fish. Here we see uh, some pharyngeal teeth with the characteristic grooves in them that identify this as coming from a grass carp. And because we use these a lot, they have a formula for telling you how many of these teeth they have on each arch. So for example, if you look in the upper left, you've got a 2-4-4-2. And so that's starting on the outside of the left arch and then going to the inside, continuing to the inside of the right arch, and then the outside of the right arch. All right? Um, so then in the middle, we have 1-4. 4, 1, and then the last one in letter C here, you've only got one row of pharyngeal teeth, and so it's just 4-4. Four four. Now let's like zoom in a little bit so we know what we're looking at. Again, you see this one is 1-4-4-1, one, four four one. and so if I show you what that is here, you've got 1 on the inside, and you see here's one on, excuse me, on the, on the outer row. And then you've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now note those are the pharyngeal teeth. Up here at the top, those structures are not the pharyngeal teeth. That's part of the arch, and that's what's going to form the posterior portion of the gill chamber. So when you're removing these, you'll notice that and realize that you are not counting this part as one of the pharyngeal teeth. Now, again, to orient yourself, the esophagus goes through right there. And so these teeth either lie next to the esophagus or actually erupt through the esophagus. I think it could be either, either or. And that's where we're going to find the pharyngeal teeth. So how do I remove them so that I can look at them under the microscope? Well, I've got some good video on that. So now I'm going to show you 
how I do that. The first step is you have to remove the operculum, then remove each of the four gill arches, loosen the skin around that fifth arch that contains the pharyngeal teeth, and then carefully remove that arch in the pharyngeal teeth, and then clean up all the soft tissue. And again, you want to be real careful here because you don't want to break any of those small teeth off and then get an incorrect count. So let's take a look at how this is done. Okay, well to get the pharyngeal teeth, our first step is we have to remove the operculum. And so we're just going to take some tissue scissors and just cut it right off and get it out of our way. And now that that's gone, we've exposed the first gill arches. Okay, so we're going to remove the first four gill arches, and you can snip these with your tissue scissors or uh, do what I do. I'm just kind of grabbing them with some forceps and kind of grabbing and pulling there at the bottom and at the top um, are the two attachment points, and we're just sort of carefully removing them one by one. So now that we have the gill arches removed, we need to loosen the skin that's around this fifth gill arch. So I like to take just a metal probe that's got an angle on it at the end and kind of insert it behind that fifth arch and just work it behind there, loosening up all that skin. And as always, you just start to be very careful here because you don't want to break off any of the pharyngeal teeth. But you can see I'm just kind of working that around behind it and sort of pulling up on the arch and loosening up any soft tissue that I can. Now if you look closely right here, you'll see that arch is rotated over and you can actually see the pharyngeal teeth right now but you can't see them well enough to identify the fish, so we need to remove them all the way. Now that that arch is all loosened up, we just need to carefully remove it. And here I just took the probe and just kind of drug it away from the fish, or you can grab it with a pair of forceps. Finally, now that we have the arch removed, we just need to clean it up. And so we'll take some forceps and the probe and we'll just sort of pull and pick and do our best to get as much of that soft tissue off, again, trying to not damage any of the pharyngeal teeth. All right, so now that it's cleaned off, you can see the teeth. And I'm going to rearrange it here to match the pictures we saw. I just kind of roll it over, and you can see there's that, that kind of horn that forms the back of the gill chamber. That's not a pharyngeal tooth. And we straighten it up, and you can see there's four pharyngeal teeth right there. And... So this is a 4-4 four four fish. Now in this picture, I have removed both 
sets of pharyngeal teeth and put them next to each other. And uh, you can see why you have to be careful. If you look closely at the one on the right, you can only see two teeth. And that's because pretty clearly I broke off the upper and the lower tooth on that one on the right. Now if we look at this set of teeth from a different species, you can see that this is a 1, 4 species. And so you've got one little one on the outer row, and then you've got one, two, three, four on the inner row. So that's just from a different species. Okay, well, that's pharyngeal teeth and how we remove them. Please let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day. See ya.